You don't fuck with no Cardi, no Uzi, no nothing? Woody. I like rap, just as long as it's none of that gangster shit. Oh my god, what the fuck do you listen to in your spare time? Woody, aside from the 90s rap I dabble into like Tupac, I generally like a wide variety of death metal, imperial German marching music, video game OSTs. That's what brings healing into my soul. And you, my friend, like that mumble rap garbage that gangsters listen to. You have no swag! Hey everybody, quick life update. I've been in a coma since the year 2000 and I just woke up yesterday. I've been slowly catching up with minor technology. The battery in my Nokia 3210 was corroded so I had to go buy a new phone. So I asked the cashier for the newest phone on the market and he handed me this fucking thing. How do I play Snake? Well, after tinkering around with it a little bit, this thing's actually pretty nifty. There's basically an infinite amount of stuff for you to do, all located in this little thing called the Play Store. This is bonkers. There's so many different apps where you can connect to different people and talk to your friends, not to mention thousands of games. I also found this thing called Tinder where you can talk to women. <laughs> Sounds awful, but the payoff is that you might be able to fornicate with one of the said women. So, I've wasted 22 years of my life comatose. There's no better time than now to get myself back out there. There is only one problem. I'm not getting any matches. So, how can I make myself desirable enough for the average woman in 2022? Well, there's this little feature on Tinder called your anthem where you can pick any song you want to display in your profile. Right before I went comatose, I was going through my 24 hours of background radiation phase, but since I can't find that on Spotify, I might as well just choose something popular. Think. Back in my day, hip hop was pretty big. And actually, rock was pretty popular too. Alright, fantastic. I just gotta find a hip-hop and or rock song to put on there and I should be golden. I'll be getting laid for the first time in, uh, 22 plus my age. Luckily for me, I found an album that has the best of both worlds, rock and hip-hop. This is what MLK was talking about. Alright, let's give her a listen. Where are you guys going? I thought this is what was in. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Loud Rocks, published by Loud Records, is a dated disaster. Hip-hop joining forces with rock isn't something new. Jay-Z and Linkin Park, Aerosmith and Run DMC, Travis Scott and Ozzy Osbourne, Kanye West and Marilyn Manson. This guy could have been our president. So with that being said, why doesn't this album work? What went wrong? Let's find out as we take a listen to the 13 tracks from Loud Rocks. Starting with track number one, Shame, featuring System of a Down and Wu-Tang Clan. This one's a pretty polarizing one in the System of a Down fan base. Why? I'm sure he signed all the legal documents. Ironically enough, this one is one of the least offensive songs on the album. It's actually a pretty decent collab, it sounds at home with System of a Down self-titled album. It's less of a cover and more of a reimagining of the Wu-Tang Clan version. The verses are almost identical with a few tweaks so it makes sense that Surge is singing it. Kill yourself. And Rizza gets a completely new verse. But my favorite thing about this song is when they played it live for the first time and the crowd just kinda understandably went dead. Uh? Up next is track number two, Make Room by the Alcoholics featuring Sugar Ray. I compare each song on this album to its normal hip-hop counterpart, and when you listen to the Loud Rock version in the original, you can tell that this one is just so half-baked. Much like Sugar Ray's existence, it's completely unnecessary, not impressive, and adds almost nothing new. You get a few new verses, and the hook is sung by Ray Sugar himself. But it just feels so out of place and awkward. Just like Sugar Ray. Beat's almost unchanged, but that's one of the only things that saves this track, seeing as the beat in the original is quite stank. Sugar Ray's DJ has a verse, but it's taken from the original and the lyrics are just lazily changed from profession of rapper to DJ. And it's laughably bad. But they easy on the treble, adjust my scratch level? Huh? 
big booty Puerto Rican goddess. Track three, Hip Hop by Dead Prez featuring Static X. Make Room was unnecessary, but this one is just disappointing. Static X is well known for their groovier style of metal. I mean, the frontman Wayne Static even calls his music evil disco. So combined with the groovier riffs, used electronics, sampling, and impressive vocal speeds, this band actually sounds like a perfect candidate for a hip hop collaboration. You wanna know what they did? They remixed the beat and said two words. Three if you don't count hip hop as one word. The song's identical to the original and Wayne sings the hook, but it's just sad that he doesn't get his own verse. I mean, listen to this part from their song Lunatic. It's even a showcase of one of his weaker vocal performances in general. They could have done so much more with this song, and it's actually kind of frustrating to listen to. It just feels like they settled for the bare minimum. 3 out of 10. Number 4, LA Times by Exhibit featuring Endo. Who looked at this cover and said, Endo? I gotta have it. I have no idea who Endo is, and their Wikipedia article doesn't have a picture, so huh? they must be irrelevant. The song, though? In the world, Welcome to our time. This one's alright. It's pretty faithful to the original, it has the same exact structure as the original, but the beat is turned into a new metal rendition, and Endo sings the chorus. Now would be a good time to say that I'm not into Endo's vocalist, I think it sounds like he's straining himself too hard. But hey, the outro is different and it kind of turns it into its own thing. Like I said, it's fine. Unless you're the one person on earth who bought this album because of Endo, there's not much of a reason to listen to it. 4 out of 10. Track number 5, Shook Ones Part 2 by Mob Deep, covered by Everlast. Saying Everlast covered this song is generous. The beat is damn near identical. They ate around it. But that actually ends up helping this song in the end because the original beat is really good. It sounds dark and gloomy, and combined with the subject matter of the lyrics, it comes together to make a powerful song. Now Everlast vocals are again, fine. They add a whole second verse, but it's not as good or as well thought out as the original one. My skin is thick, cause I'll be up in the mix of action. If I'm not at home, puffin' live, relaxing. LA got a nigga depressed. Oh my god! Feels like Mob Deep gave their homework to Everlast a copy and they said, make sure you change it up so it isn't obvious. Number six, Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with, featuring Rage Against the Machine guitarist Tom Morello and Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Chad Smith. Probably the longest introduction I've ever had to do for a song, and what a song it is. The original is a classic from the Wu-Tang Clan, and I was pretty excited to see how they fuck it up. And man, it delivered. The backing track is completely new. It basically becomes a Rage Against the Machine song with Tom Morello being on the guitar and all. I don't know why Chad Smith is the drummer instead of Brad Wilk, the actual drummer for the band. It's not like they were broken up yet when this song came out. I don't know, maybe they just want another name to put on the blue guy's bicep. That being said, the backing track is pretty good. The real problem is Wu-Tang Clan themselves, surprisingly. When I said this song becomes a Rage Against the Machine song, I mean it in every way. That means the vocals are also more rough and verbose, which is not an excuse for their audio to be peaking the whole fucking time. Also, this is a bit of a nitpicky thing, but what's the most iconic part of the original song? Tiger style. The tiger style sample they use is nowhere to be seen in this version, which is kinda, kinda lame. 4 out of 10. Number 7, Only When I'm Drunk by The Alcoholics, covered by Crazy Town. Crazy Town has done other things besides Butterfly. I know, try not to freak out. 
And this sucks, dude. Not only because one, it's Crazy Town, but two, they were so proud of this cover that they already put it in their debut album. So not only is this a meh cover of a not great song, it's a meh cover of a not great song that already existed. But they didn't make it two minutes longer, so that's, that's something. It's a decent rap metal listen if you're into that sort of thing. It's just kind of lame seeing something that already existed instead of something new. Like, come on, the CD costed me... Number 8, What You See Is What You Get by Exhibit featuring Seven Dust. Bringing in Seven Dust for this one doesn't add a whole lot, however in the case of this song, it's not really a bad thing. The lyrics are exactly the same, but Lejon Witherspoon from Seven Dust comes in on the chorus and does a surprisingly good job. I've always thought Seven Dust vocals were underrated, and I'm pretty sure I'm alone on that one. Because whenever I try to talk to people about it, they're always like, Who are you? Leave me alone. I'm calling the police. Fucking casuals. The conversion of the beat to new metal is done pretty well. It has the same kind of flow to it, and it isn't completely overblown. It's nuanced enough where it can still be rapped over. This song won't turn any heads, but it's one of the better ones so far. I'm feeling a solid six. Track 9, How About Some Hardcore by M.O.P. Remix by Grunge is Dead. Well, the content of this album is a good enough reminder, but who actually made this? You may be thinking to yourself, well, there was never a band called Grunge is Dead. And you'd be right. Oh, what the fuck. And you'd be right. Grunge is Dead is the pseudonym for one Butch Vig, a producer for a lot of 90s rock albums and the drummer for the band Garbage. This name just oozes mystery though, he's only gone under the name Grunge is Dead for this one album and his name is right under it anyways. With that in mind, my theory of his name basically being a burner account so he doesn't have to be associated with cracker shit the album was disproven. So what was the point of this? Well after some excavation, the answer is a little anticlimactic to be honest, but Grunge is Dead is actually the name of Butch Vig's home recording studio. That doesn't explain why now he's going by Grunge is Dead doc- I'm sorry. Grungisdead.com. Enough about silly rabbit holes, we're talking about the song, and, oh man, the original song is already not that great in my opinion, none of the lyrics really have any lasting power, except for the one where he says he puts the Mac in a Roni, that one's, that, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. This remix is just terrible, the backing track is about the blandest sounding milk toast shit they could have chosen. Remember how I mentioned in the last song that Seven Dust backing track was really good because it kept a similar composition that made it easy to rap over? Yeah, I'd like to see high school SoundCloud rappers say they would have killed this. MOP's struggling, and you can hear it through the random vocal speeds and dragging of the lines. Not a very good listen. Sorry, Butch, you should have erased your name. 2 out of 10. Number 10, For Heaven's Sake 2000 by Wu-Tang Clan featuring Tony Iommi and Ozzy Osbourne. You see, this is what happens when you ask the Monkey's Paw for a Black Sabbath reunion. Hey, guess what? It's the same exact as the original, but they put a Tony Iommi riff in it while Ozzy sings over it. In said verse, Ozzy refers to himself as a poor little white boy. Okay. I mean, it's what you expect. Iommi playing something dark and gloomy as ever, and Ozzy sounding like... <sighs> but how many times do I have to say it? This type of collab... It's Wu-Tang Clan and Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, Do something with it. If you really want a song where Ozzy meets rap, try the song Take What You Want by Post Malone. It features Ozzy and Travis Scott and it blends the styles of each respective artist really well. This one though is half-assed, quarter-assed even. 3.5 out of 10. 11. Caribbean Connection by Big Pun covered by Shooty's Groove. Tragically, the featured artist Big Pun died of a heart attack shortly before the album's release, so he's not present in this cover version, aside from some pre-recorded lines. Well, now that opens up a new game of is this in bad taste or not? And I would say... No, not really. The conversion to metal does change the overall tone of the song, but they don't use Big Pun's vocals that much, so it doesn't sound disrespectful to their rapper or anything. I had no idea who Shooty's Groove was before this, but after listening to some of their work, 
I would say they managed to make an end product that reflects their own music style while keeping it in line with the original. Overall, it's fine. You're not going to catch me listening to Shooty's Groove anytime soon, but this was alright. 5 out of 10. Track 12, Survival of the Fittest by Mob Deep featuring Sick of It All. Alright, what is this garbage? We live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit, only the strong survive. We live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit, only the strong survive! What the fuck? This till the day that we die. Survival of the fit, only the strong survive! We live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit, only the strong survive! Obviously, I've never listened to Sick of It All, but. God damn. Once a song dedicated to the dead brother of the frontman Havoc is now turned into a complete laughing stock of a song. They could not have chosen a pair of vocals that clash harder than these two. And the thing is, I actually enjoy the backing track done by them. I like how chaotic and energetic it can get. But the vocals clearly do not fit that style of music. You can barely hear him during the second part. Obviously with blast beats you have to express your voice to fit the music and that's why Sick of It All sounds like And since Prodigy and Havoc's vocals are more lo-fi and soft, it comes together to create probably the most bizarre and out of place collaboration on this album. 2.5 out of 10. Number 13, Still Not a Player by Big Pun, covered by Incubus. Incubus turns this hip hop classic into pop rock, and as awful as that may sound, they actually do a pretty good job with it. It's not groundbreaking for sure, but Big Pun's vocals are sampled in a way that actually makes sense. Instead of just snapping some bars over blast beats, they specifically compose their song to follow a more bass-centered rhythm for the verses where they use his vocals. Then Incubus comes back in for their part and they go back to their more traditional style of playing and singing. A good example of how these collaborations can actually work if composed in a way that makes sense. You know, Incubus used to make music more funk oriented that actually blended a lot of hip hop elements with rock. It makes me wonder how this song would have turned out if released earlier within the time of their first and second albums. What? Yeah, I see the name of the first album. You're expecting me to make an Among Us joke about that? Oh yeah, uh, 6 out of 10. As for bonus tracks, this one contains two. And what a better day to be Canadian than the day you buy Loud Rocks. Cause you would get track 14, damn, by the Alcoholics, covered by Finger 11. So, seeing as Finger 11 is a Canadian band, throwing this one in there for the Canadians is quite a patriotic homage, even if I see it as domestic terrorism. What were they trying to do here? Finger 11 puts an edgy spin on this song by singing the intro in a hush style and then leads up to a bombastic rendition of the chorus with a metalcore sounding riff. Sounds great on paper, but not in practice. Then you remember the source material, and this epic rendition just becomes really cheesy and really embarrassing. Three out of ten. And the last track for today, the Japanese exclusive Reign of the Tech 2000 by the Beat Nuts featuring YKZ. How can you all be so statistically depressed? You got the beat nuts, you ungrateful shits. The main draw of the Japanese audience here is YKZ, a Japanese metal and rap fusion group. And when I first listened to the Reign of the Tech 2000, I initially read about how hard it is to understand their lyrics and that they can't rap and how choppy the lyrics sounded. So to better understand the band, I listened to their other work and to my surprise, None of their songs were in English.
So YKZ had to write a whole verse in English for this song, and for what they did, it's not bad. That, however, does not mean this track is easy on my ears. This shit's straight up corny and sounds like it belongs in a Bionicle commercial. So that's Loud Rocks, a truly strange release that is certainly a product of the times and aged like the forgotten leftover chili in my fridge that was made three months ago. And quickly, no, I did not find the perfect song to put on my Tinder profile. I actually deleted Tinder and moved on to a different app called Grindr. The girls look way better and they actually message me first and tell me how much they want to top me. It's nice to know that there's people out there who recognize my greatness and strive to become better. So why did Loud Rocks fail? Why does nobody talk about this album? Well, like I said, it's a product of the time, but even back then, nobody wanted this. For one, the album lacked notable figures. Sure, it had System, Ozzy, Incubus, and everyone under the Loud Records label, but it still lacked a lot of big players at the time. None of these collabs were mind-blowing enough to get people's attention, and there's nothing wrong with featuring small artists as guests, but... Come on, Endo? Shooty's Groove? That's not even the biggest problem. No, the biggest problem was that the novelty of rap meeting rock had already died out. Sure, nowadays the idea of rap rock is one that usually gets glossed over with the rise of experimental hip hop. There's been way more crazy blends of genres going on and artists like Machine Gun Kelly, despite what you think of his music, is extremely popular and his whole thing is blending rap and punk rock. But back when Anthrax and Public Enemy made Bring the Noise in 1991, it was bonkers. It was like playing Sonic on Super Nintendo and Mario on the Genesis. They joined forces to create a cover that not only took the hip hop and rock scene by storm, it could be argued that it outshined the original. The song was featuring albums from both artists, numerous video games, and quickly became a live staple for Anthrax. So more artists started doing it. If we were steadily getting brand new songs, you know, actual collaborations between rock artists and hip hop artists, why would we want to listen to a bunch of mediocre cover songs with lazily slapped on lyrics straight from the original? That's just my two cents on why Loud Rocks failed. I give this album a 4 out of 10. Putting everything we know aside and looking at it from a critical standpoint, all you're left with is a compilation of half ass hip hop covers that feel like a forced product from a record label, and should have just stayed as b-sides from their respective artists. When the most memorable moment of your album is Serge Tanky and getting borderline racist, you know you've made a bad product. Kill yourself. Nigga.